Hey guys. So today we have another driving test with uh, 50 questions and a correct answer to each question. So let's get started. Question number one, which road user has caused the hazard? Pay attention to the image, please. A. The car turning, which is with the arrow D. You see the red car over there with D. B. The moving car, which is marked with the letter C in the image. And we have the parked car, which is with the arrow A. Or the pedestrian waiting to cross, which is with uh, the arrow B. Okay, guys, let's start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C, the parked car, which is with the arrow A. Explanation. The car with the arrow A is parked within the area marked by zigzag lines at the pedestrian crossing and parking here is actually illegal. And it also blocks the view for pedestrians who want to cross the road, restricting the view of the crossing for approaching traffic. Let's move on to the next question. What should the driver of the gray car be especially aware of? If you have a look, the red arrow is pointing at the gray car. So what should the driver be especially aware of? A. Doors opening on parked cars. B. Empty parking spaces. C. The uneven road surface. Or D. Traffic following behind. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A, doors opening on parked cars. When you pass parked cars, there is a risk that the driver or a passenger may not check before they open the door into the road. A defensive driver will drive slowly and be looking for people who may be about to get out of their car. Next question. What should you expect if you see this sign ahead? A. The road will bend sharply to the left. B. The road will bend sharply to the right. C. The road will go steeply downhill. Or D. The road will go steeply uphill. And the countdown begins now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. The road will bend sharply to the left. This sign shows that the road will bend sharply to the left. You need to slow down in plenty of time and choose the right, the correct gear before you start to turn. Braking hard and late while also sharply changing direction is likely to cause a skid. Question number four. What should you do as you approach this cyclist? A. Flash your headlights at the cyclist. B. Rev your engine so the cyclist knows you are following behind. C. Slow down, allowing the cyclist to turn. D. Try and overtake before the cyclist gets to the junction. Five, four, three, two, one. 
And the correct answer is C. Slow down and allow the cyclist to turn. You need to keep well back and give the cyclist time and plenty of room to turn safely. Don't try to intimidate the cyclist by getting too close or by trying to squeeze past. Question number five. What should you do if you want to turn left at a junction where pedestrians have started to cross? A. Give way to them. B. Go around them, leaving plenty of room. C. Sound your horn and proceed. D. Stop and wave at them to cross. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is A. Give way to them. When you are turning into a side road, pedestrians who are crossing, they have priority. You need to wait to allow them to finish crossing safely. Be patient if the pedestrians are slow or they are unsteady. Don't try to rush them by sounding your horn, flashing your lights, revving your engine, or giving any other inappropriate signal. Question number six. Why should you check for motorcyclists just before turning right into a side road? A. They may be emerging from the side road. B. They may be following you closely. C. They may be overtaking on your left or D, they may be overtaking on your right. Let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, they may be overtaking on your right. Never Try to change direction to the right without first checking your right-hand mirror and the blind spot. A motorcyclist might not have seen your signal and could be hidden by other traffic. This observation should become a matter of routine. Question number seven. Which is the most vulnerable road user? A. Car driver B. Lorry driver C. Motorcyclist or D. Tractor driver 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 And the correct answer is C. The motorcyclist Pedestrians and riders on two wheels can be harder to see than the other road users. You need to make sure that you look for them, especially at junctions. Effective observation coupled with appropriate action can save lives. Question number eight. You are approaching this roundabout. What should you do if there are horses being ridden in front of you. A. Accelerate past as quickly as you can. B. Give them plenty of room. C. Sound your horn to give them a warning. Or D. Treat them like any other vehicle. Let's start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B, give them plenty of room. Horse riders, they often keep to the outside of the roundabout even when they are turning right. Just give them enough room and remember that, that, and remember 
that they may need to cross lanes of traffic. Question number nine. You are following a lorry on this wet road. What should you do when the spray makes it difficult to see the road ahead? A. Drop back until you can see better. B. Keep close to the lorry, away from the spray. C. Put your headlights on full beam. Or D. Speed up and overtake quickly. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is A. Drop back until you can see better. Large vehicles, such as lorries, for example, they can throw up a lot of spray when the road is wet. This makes it difficult for drivers behind to be able to see the road in front of them. You will be able to see more if you drop back further out of the spray. This will also increase your separation distance, giving you more room to stop if you have to. Question 10. When may you wait in a bus junction, like the one in the photo? A. When approaching a pelican crossing. B. When approaching a zebra crossing. C. When oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. Or D. When you are stationary in a queue of traffic. Let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C. When oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. Okay, so the purpose of a box junction is to keep the junction clear by preventing vehicles from stopping in the path of crossing traffic. You mustn't enter a box junction unless your exit is clear. However, you may enter the box and wait if you want to turn right and are only prevented from doing so by oncoming traffic. Question number 11. Where are amber reflective studs found on a motorway? A. Between each pair of lanes. B. Between the acceleration lane and the carriageway. C. Between the central reservation and the carriageway. D. Between the hard shoulder and the carriageway. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C between the central reservation and the carriageway. On motorways, reflective studs of various colors are fixed in the road between the lanes. These help you to identify which lane you are in when it's dark or in poor visibility. Amber colored studs are found on the right hand edge of the main carriageway next to the central reservation. Question number 12. What will the speed limit usually be where you can see street lights but no speed limit signs? A. 30 miles per hour. B. 40 miles per hour. C. 50 miles per hour. Or D. 60 miles per hour. Okay, guys, so you have five seconds to guess the correct answer. Four, three, two, one. The correct answer is A, 30 miles per hour. The presence of street lights generally indicates that there is a 30 miles per hour speed limit unless there are signs which tell you otherwise. Question number 13. 
when may you stop on a clear way? A. During daylight hours. B. In the rush hour. C. Never. Or D. When it's busy. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Never. And this is because clear ways are in place so that traffic can flow without the obstruction of parked vehicles. Just one parked vehicle can cause an obstruction for all of the other traffic. You mustn't stop where a clear way is in force, not even to pick up or set down passengers. Next question. Which vehicle might have to take a different course from normal at a roundabout? A. An estate car. B. A long vehicle. C. A sports car. Or D. A van. Okay, guys, the countdown starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B, a long vehicle. A long vehicle may have to straddle lanes either on or approaching a roundabout so that the rear wheels don't mount the curb. If you are following a long vehicle, stay well back and give it plenty of room. Question number 15. Which sign means no stopping? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is sign B. Stopping where this clear way restriction applies is likely to cause congestion. Allow the traffic to flow by obeying the signs. Question number 16. What does this sign mean? A. No trams ahead. B. Oncoming trams. C. Trams crossing ahead or D, trams only. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C, trams crossing ahead. This sign tells you to beware of trams. If you remember, this is a triangle warning. If you don't usually drive in a town where there are trams, remember to look out for them at junctions and look for tram rails, signs and signals. Next question. The fluid level in your battery is low. What fluid should you use to top it up? A. Battery acid. B. Distilled water. C engine coolant or the engine oil countdown guys five four three two one and the correct answer is b distilled water some modern batteries are maintenance free check your vehicle handbook and if necessary Make sure that the plates in each battery cell are covered with fluid. Question number 18. You have just passed your first practical driving test. Congratulations if you did. What will you have to do if you get six penalty points on your license in the next two years? 
a reapply for your full license immediately, b retake only your practical test, c retake only your theory test, or d retake your theory and practical tests. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is D. Retake your theory and practical tests. If you accumulate six or more penalty points within two years of gaining your first full license, it will be revoked. The six or more points include any gained to, due to offenses you committed before passing your test. If this happens, you may only drive as a learner until you pass both the theory and the practical tests again. Question 19. What must you do? if you come across roadworks that have a temporary speed limit displayed. A. Ignore the displayed limit. B. Obey the limit but only during rush hour. C. Obey the speed limit. D. Use your own judgment. The limit is only advisory. 5, 4, 3, 2, one and the correct answer is C, C, obey the speed limit. Where there are extra hazards, such as at roadworks, it's often necessary to slow traffic by imposing a lower speed limit. These speed limits aren't advisory, they must be obeyed. Question number 20. What can cause excessive or uneven tire wear? A. A faulty braking system. B. A faulty electrical system. C. A faulty exhaust system. Or D. A faulty gearbox. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A, a faulty braking system. If you see that parts of the tread on your tires are wearing before others, it may indicate a brake, suspension, or wheel alignment fault. Regular servicing will help to detect faults at an early stage and this will avoid the risk of minor faults becoming serious or even dangerous. Question number 21. What should you do as you approach the lorry in this photo? A. Flash your lights at the lorry. B. Make the lorry wait for you. C. Move to the right-hand side of the road. Or D. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D. Slow down and be prepared to wait. When turning, long vehicles need much more room on the road than other vehicles. At junctions, they may take up the whole of the road space, so you need to be patient and allow them the room that they need. Next question. What does this signal mean? A. Both trams and cars can continue. B. Both trams and cars must stop. C. Cars must stop or the trams must stop. Countdown 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is the trams must stop. The white light shows that trams must stop. 
the green light shows that other vehicles can go if the way is clear. Trams are being introduced into more cities, so you are likely to come across them and you should learn which signs apply to them. Question number 23. You are following a vehicle on a wet road. You stay a safe distance behind it. What should you do if a driver overtakes you and pulls into the gap you've left? A. Drop back to regain a safe distance. B. Flash your headlights as a warning. C. Stay close to the other vehicle until it moves on. Or D. Try to overtake safely as soon as you can. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. Drop back to regain a safe distance. Wet weather will affect the time it takes for you to stop and can also affect your control. Your speed should allow you to stop safely and in plenty of time. If another vehicle pulls into the gap you have allowed, is back until you regain your stopping distance. Next question. You are on a motorway that isn't subject to smart motorway regulations. When should you use the hard shoulder? A. When you are joining the motorway. B. When you are leaving the motorway. C. When you are stopping for a rest. Or D. When you are stopping in an emergency. Countdown, countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D. When you are stopping in an emergency. Do not use the hard shoulder for stopping unless it is a genuine emergency. If you want to stop for any other reason, go to the next exit or service area. So guys, no stopping unless you really, really, really have an emergency. Okay, next question. Number 25. How should you use the lanes on a motorway? A. Keep to the left-hand lane unless you are overtaking. B. Overtake using the lane that's clearest. C. Stay in one lane until you reach your exit. Or D. Use the lane that has the least traffic. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is A. Keep to the left-hand lane unless you are overtaking. You should normally travel in the left-hand lane unless you are overtaking a slower moving vehicle. When you finished overtaking, you need to move back into the left-hand lane, but don't cut across in front of the vehicle that you have overtaken. Next question. For how long is a sworn valid? This is the off-road notification. A. Until the vehicle is insured and MOT'd. B. Until the vehicle is repaired or modified. C. Until the vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. Or D. Until the vehicle is used on the road. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Until the vehicle is taxed sold or scrapped. A SORN allows you to keep a vehicle off-road and untaxed. SORN will end when the vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. Question number 27. How will your journey be affected by traveling outside the busy times of day? A. Your journey will be more hazardous. B. Your journey will have fewer delays. 
C. Your journey will take longer. D. Your journey will use more fuel. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B. Your journey will have fewer delays. If possible, of course, avoid the early morning, late afternoon and early evening rush hour. That's obviously because in the early morning everybody goes to work, school and so on, late in the afternoon school breaks and so on. And again, you have the early evening, the rush hour when office is closed, people go home, they finish the day at work and so on. Doing this, avoiding the rush hours, should allow you to have a better journey with fewer delays. This should help you to arrive at your destination feeling less stressed. Next question. You are in a tunnel and you see this sign. Green, yellow, white. Remember, what does the sign mean? A. Beware of pedestrians crossing ahead. B. Beware of pedestrians, no footpath ahead. C. Direction to an emergency pedestrian exit. Or D. No access for pedestrians. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Direction to an emergency ped pedestrian exit. If you have to leave your vehicle and get out of a tunnel by an emergency exit, do so as quickly as you possibly can. You need to follow the signs directing you to the nearest exit point. If there are more people using the exit, don't panic, but try to leave in a calm and orderly manner. Remember the green color and the yellow, like we've, did, we've done in our previous videos on road signs. Usually this means some kind of an emergency or access. Next question. When may you stop on a motorway? A. If you have to read the map. B. If your mobile phone rings. C. In an emergency or a breakdown or D, when you are tired and you need a rest. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is C, in an emergency or a breakdown. You shouldn't normally stop on a motorway, but there may be times when you need to do so. If your vehicle breaks down or you have an emergency, Stop on the hard shoulder and use the emergency phones to call for help. Question number 30. What's the national speed limit for a car or motorcycle on a motorway? A. 50 miles per hour. B. 60 miles per hour. C. 70 miles per hour. Or D. 80 miles per hour. Okay, guys, count down. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is C, 70 miles per hour. The national speed limit for a car or motorbike on a motorway is 70 miles per hour. Lower speed limits may be in force, for example, if they are roadworks. Variable speed limits also operate in some areas when the motorway is very busy. Cars or motorcycles towing trailers are subject to a lower speed limit. Next question, everyone. You are approaching this roundabout. What should you do when a cyclist is skipping to the left, but they are signaling to turn right? A allow them space to turn, B, assume that they are turning left, C, overtake them, or D, sound your horn. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is A, allow them space to turn. 
And this is because cycling in today's heavy traffic can be hazardous. Some cyclists may not feel safe crossing the path of traffic to take up a position in an outside lane. You need to be aware of this and you also need to understand that even though they are in the left-hand lane, the cyclist might be turning right. Next question. We have some pets here. What does it mean if you see a pedestrian with a dog which has a yellow or a burgundy coat? Oh, they're so cute. A. The pedestrian is a dog trainer. B. The pedestrian is an older person. C. The pedestrian is colorblind. Or D. The pedestrian is deaf. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. The pedestrian is deaf. Dogs trained to help deaf people, they have a yellow or a burgundy coat. If you see one, you should take extra care as the pedestrian may not be aware of vehicles approaching. Thus, they may not be aware of you as a driver driving your car approaching them. Next question. You are going through a long tunnel. What will warn you of congestion or an incident ahead? Oh, I love long tunnels. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. A. So, what will warn you of congestion or an incident ahead? A. Areas with hatch markings. B. Hazard warning lines. C. Other drivers flashing their lights. Or D. Variable message signs. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Variable message signs. Please follow the instructions given by the signs or by tunnel officials. In congested tunnels, a minor incident can soon turn into a major one with serious or even fatal results. Next question. And I'm sorry, guys, I do apologize. This might be distressing to some of you to see this, but uh, you guys, you need to remember that this is real life and it can actually happen. So, yeah, the question is, at an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns. How could you help them? A. Apply lotions to the injury. B. Burst any blisters. C. Douse the burns with clean, cool water. Or D. Remove anything sticking to the burns. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is C. Douse the burns with clean, cool water. Your priority is to cool the burns with clean, cool water. Its coolness will help take the heat out of the burns and relieve the pain. Keep the wound doused for at least 20 minutes. If there are blisters, don't try to burst them as this could lead to infection. And I think that it's always better to be ready and to know what to do in a situation like this. And I think that this is very this is very good that uh, we get this kind of questions in uh, the driving test. Let's move on to the next question, which is going to be, apologies again, another distressing one. But just remember that this is real life and this actually happens. So you need to be ready and you need to be prepared. Our question is, there has been a collision. A motorcyclist is lying injured and unconscious. Why should you only remove their helmet if it's essential? A. Removing the helmet could let them get cold. B. Removing the helmet could make any injuries even worse. C. They might not want you to remove it. Or D. You could scratch the helmet as you remove it. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Removing it could make any injuries worse. 
when someone is injured. Any movement that isn't absolutely necessary should be avoided since it could make the injuries worse. Unless it's essential to remove a motorcyclist's helmet, it's generally safer to leave it in place. Next question. What might you expect to happen in this situation? A. Traffic speed will increase. B. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. C. Traffic will move into the right-hand lane. D. Traffic won't need to change position. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. Be courteous and allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. And uh, if you look at this sign, it is telling you that the right-hand lane is closed and uh, to use the left-hand lane. Next question. What may help to deter a thief from stealing your car? A. Always keeping the headlights on. B. Always keeping the interior light on. C. Etching the registration number on the windows. Or D. Fitting reflective glass windows. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Etching the registration number on the windows. Having your car registration number etched on all your windows is a cheap and effective way to deter professional car thieves. I didn't even have any idea that this was actually a thing, but I think it's a brilliant idea. Okay, let's move on to the next question. You are traveling along this road. How should you pass the cyclist? A. Change down one gear before you pass. B. Keep close to them as you pass. C. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. Or D. Sound your horn as you pass. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is C. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. Allow the cyclists plenty of room in case they wobble or they swerve around the pothole or raise the drain. Look well ahead before you start to overtake because you will need to cross the hazard line. Look for entrances where vehicles could be waiting to pull out. Next question. What should you do if a vehicle pulls out in front of you at a junction? A. Accelerate past it immediately. B. Flash your headlights and drive up close behind. C. Slow down and be ready to stop. Or D. Swerve past it and sound your horn. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Slow down and be ready to stop. Try to anticipate what other drives might do. Look and plan ahead so that you are ready to respond safely if a hazard develops. Be tolerant of road users who make mistakes. Question number 40. You are driving on a motorway. What does it mean if the car in front shows its hazard warning lights for a short time? A. The driver wants you to overtake. B. The other car is going to change lanes. C. There is a police speed check ahead. Or D. Traffic ahead is slowing or stopping suddenly. Countdown, guys. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Traffic ahead is slowing or stopping suddenly. If the vehicle in front shows its hazard warning lights, there may be an incident, stopped traffic or queuing traffic ahead. By keeping a safe distance from the vehicle in front of you, 
you will be able to look beyond it and see any hazards well ahead. Next question. When should you use hazard warning lights? A, when warning oncoming traffic that you intend to stop. B, when you are double parked on a two-way road. C, when your direction indicators are not working or D, when your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, when your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature and should be used if you've broken down and you are causing an obstruction. Don't use them as an excuse to park illegally. You may also use them on motorways to warn traffic behind you of any kind of danger ahead. Next question. What can you do to reduce environmental damage caused by your vehicle? A. Avoid making a lot of short journeys. B. Avoid using the cruise control. C. Use the air conditioning whenever you drive. Or D. Use the gears to slow the vehicle. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. Avoid making a lot of short journeys. Avoid using your car for short journeys. On a short journey, the engine is unlikely to warm up fully and will therefore be running less efficiently. This will result in the car using more fuel and emitting higher levels of harmful emissions. Next question. How should you use anti-lock brakes when you need to stop in an emergency? A. Apply the parking brake to reduce the stopping distance. B. Brake normally but grip the steering wheel tightly. C. Brake promptly and firmly until you have stopped. Or D. Keep pumping the foot brake to prevent skidding. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... C. Brake promptly and firmly until you have stopped. If you have ABS and you need to stop in an emergency, keep your foot firmly on the brake pedal until the car stops. When the ABS operates, you may hear a grating sound and feel vibration through the brake pedal. This is normal and you should maintain pressure on the brake pedal until the car stops. Question number 44. You are driving at night. What should you do if you are dazzled by a vehicle behind you? A. Brake sharply to a stop. B. Set your mirror to dazzle the other driver. C. Set your mirror to the anti-dazzle position. Or D. Switch your rear lights on and off. 5. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is C. Set your mirror to the anti dazzel position. The interior mirror of most vehicles can be set to an anti dazzel position. You will still be able to see the light of the traffic behind you, but the dazzle will be greatly reduced. It seems that in the last few months, from a lot of uh, media articles I've read, a lot of drivers are actually complaining of uh, this kind of issue, especially when driving uh, when it's dark outside. There is a lot of uh, dazzle and from vehicles behind, and I think that is got something to do with uh, the lights on some modern cars, and they are giving this kind of reflection, which really blinds you, maybe because they. They have LEDs or something in the likes of that. So, and there were a lot of drivers who were actually asking the government to try and do something. But although I'm not sure what can be done about it. But anyway, let's move on to question number 45. 
You are driving towards a zebra crossing. What should you do if a person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross? A. Be prepared to stop. B. Continue on your way. C. Wave to the person to cross. Or D. Wave to the person to wait. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A. Be prepared to stop. You should slow down and be prepared to stop as you would for an able-bodied person. Don't wave them across as other traffic may not stop. Question number 46. What should you do if your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel? A. Stand in front of your vehicle to warn oncoming drivers. B. Stand in the lane behind your vehicle to warn others. C. Stay in your vehicle and wait for the police. Or D. Switch on the hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. The countdown starts now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Switch on hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. A broken down vehicle in a tunnel can cause serious congestion and danger to other road users. If your vehicle breaks down, you need to get help without delay. Switch on your hazard warning lights, then go to an emergency telephone to call for help. Please don't stand in front of your car because it's extremely dangerous. Question number 47. What can you achieve if you drive smoothly? A. Increase in fuel consumption by around 15%. B. Increase in journey times by around 15%. C. Reduction in fuel consumption by about 15%. Or D. Reduction in journey times by about 15%. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... C. Reduction in fuel consumption by about 15%. By driving smoothly, you will not only save around 15% of your fuel, but you will also reduce the amount of wear and tear on your vehicle and the level of pollution it produces. You are also likely to feel more relaxed and have a more pleasant journey. Question number 48. You wish to tow a trailer. Where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? A. In the highway code. B. In the vehicle handbook. C. In your license documents. Or D. In your vehicle registration certificate. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... B, in the vehicle handbook. You must know how to load your trailer or caravan so that the hitch exerts an appropriate downward force on the tow ball. Information about the maximum permitted nose weight can be found in your vehicle handbook or obtained from your vehicle manufacturer's agent. Question number 49. What can result when you travel for long distances in neutral or known as coasting? A. Easier steering. B. Improvement in control. C. Increased fuel consumption. Or D. Reduction in control. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... The reduction in control. Coasting is the term used when the clutch is held down or the gear lever is in neutral and the vehicle is allowed to free wheel. This reduces the driver's control of the vehicle. When you coast, the engine can't drive the wheels to stabilize you through a corner or give the, assi the assistance of engine braking to help slow the car. And we have 
reached our final question for today, question number 15. You are driving on a road that has a cycle lane. What does it mean if the lane is marked by a broken white line? A. Cyclists can travel in both directions in that lane. B. The lane must be used by motorcyclists in heavy traffic. C. There is a reduced speed limit for motor vehicles using the lane. Or D. You shouldn't drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. And our last countdown for today starts now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. You shouldn't drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. Cycle lanes are marked with either a solid or a broken white line. If the line is solid, you should check the times of operation shown on the signs and not drive or park in the lane during those times. If the line is broken, you shouldn't drive or park in the lane unless this is unavoidable. And thank you guys so much for today. Please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.